Question number 11. Mika Aitari. Tēnā koe, Mr Speaker. Tēnā koe. Mr. Te Whare nei, tēnā tātou katoa. Mr Speaker, my question is to the Minister of Māori Development and asks, does he believe the recent consultation hui on Te Tūru Whenua Māori reform has given him a mandate for land reform? If so, why? The Honourable Te Urara Flavel. Uh, kia ora tātou katoa. Kia ora. Kia whai wāhi au, kia ranginui, uh, e takuto mai rā, e ora kei te tuatahi. E koro, takuto mai. Uh, Mr. Speaker, in response to the, uh, the question, uh, sir, there is broad support for the land reform that, that comes not only from recent hui, but also from the extensive consultation that has taken place over a period of 17 years. And I, sir, for one, am not prepared to stand by and wait another generation while too many Māori landowners are constrained by unfair and inequitable law. Supplementary Mr. question, Mika Aitari. To the Minister, can he confirm that Te Tūru Whenua Māori will allow freehold Māori land to be reclassified as general land and then sold off to the highest bidder? The Honourable Te Urara Flavel. Mr Speaker, a member will have to wait until it arrives in Parliament, but that is not the intent. Tree. Order. Supplementary question, Mika Whaitari. Will he ignore Māori landowners, the New Zealand Māori Council, iwi leaders, and the Māori Women's Welfare League, who have rejected his changes, which will lead to the loss of land for future generations for Māori. Well, the Honourable Te Irara Flavel. Uh, Mr Speaker, I can say that at Waitangi, actually, the iwi leaders were quite supportive of the programme that we're running. And in fact, uh, we have some letters of support already that have come in the door. In terms of the consultation that we've run, we can say that we've been working very hard to have landowners engaged in, indeed, the iwi leaders, Māori Women's Welfare League, New Zealand Māori Council have been involved in the discussion about the bill and working workshops during this year. Is it, uh, is it a hard process? Absolutely, sir. We've taken the unusual step of releasing two, uh, uh, releasing two drafts. We've taken the unusual step of having or counting up at least 121 hui since 1998 on these reforms. Most of those have been in the last three years. And just in case there's any doubt, we've received 666 submissions since 1998. Most of these have been in the last three years. There's got to be something in that that tells the member, actually, there is support for this movement. Supplementary question, Chris Bishop. Oh, thank you, Mr Speaker. How does the series of expert advisory groups and dozens of national hui conducted over the past three years compare with the Labor government's decision to confiscate the foreshore and seabed after consultation with Order. Winston Peters? Order. 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 If members on my right hand side wish to say for the balance of question time, I know there's not much more to go, then they won't interject. I'll hear the point of order if there is one. Mr. Speaker, I, I just invite you to reflect on the Speaker's rulings that you've previously made about the government members using their supplementary questions to ask questions that are simply designed to provide an opportunity for attacking the opposition, uh, as this one does. The Minister has no responsibility for the actions of the previous government. I'll hear from the Honourable Jerry Brownlee. Uh, Mr Speaker, it's not at all unreasonable to ask a Minister to make a comparison uh, between processes that uh, uh, could have some degree of controversy. So the question seeks to make controversy out of the uh, superb process that's been run by the Honourable uh, uh, Tūrara Flavel. And uh, the, the real point is... Uh, a real point is that it, would, it is in stark contrast to a different order, process order, order, used I, by a previous I government. Don't, I don't need any further assistance from either, and I don't know because the question's not been answered as to whether it's in stark contrast or not. Mr Hipkins is right to refer to uh, Speaker's ruling, I think it's 174, that I will not accept a question if it's designed simply to attack the opposition parties. But in this case, the question to me is legitimate in that it is saying, how does the process being established by the government, go government compare with a process established by a previous government? I'll be listening, the question is in order. I'll be listening very careful to the answer so that it is informative to the House and not taken as an opportunity to attack an opposition party. The Honourable Tia, order. No, well, I've ruled on that. If it's a fresh point of order, I'm only delighted to hear it. There, is a, there are other speakers' rulings, and there's, in fact, standing orders, 
around not uh, including assertions in, uh, in questions that are being asked. Now, I know that you have been very liberal in your interpretation of that, because those making assertions, then the ministers have an opportunity to respond to any assertions they disagree with. In this case, the assertions being made are being made by a questioner and being answered by a minister, neither of whom have any role in the assertions being made. So I'd ask you to uh, more strictly interpret that part of Speaker's rulings if these types of questions are going to be allowed. Order. No, I don't need any assistance because I think we're actually just relitigating exactly where I've been. What the question asks, in essence, is how does a current process being established compare with a previous process? That's the essence of the question. That's legitimate. We quite often get questions, particularly to Minister of Finance, as how does the current economic trend with something under a previous government, and that's accepted. So the question is in order. We will listen carefully to the answer. I don't want to hear the answer being used simply as an opportunity to attack an opposition party, which case, if it is, I won't hesitate to stop the answer. The Honourable Chair of Speaker. Speaker. Uh, so I outlined earlier uh, the the role that we've taken in trying to consult with people across the board. Uh, I talked about hui, I've talked about submissions. We've also made 109 changes to the bill and as a result of feedback, 28 deletions. As recently as this February, we've had uh, a further 21 hui across the country to explain changes. And throughout this time, we've engaged with a large number of landowners, trusts and corporations, both directly and through uh, represented, rep representative groups. So I can say that the process that we've run has been extremely well uh, attended and well done. We've undertaken genuine consultation with the aim of actually strengthening Māori rights, rights of Māori people over their land, not taking away rights. Supplementary question, Mika Faitari. Mr Speaker, to the Minister, when will he come clean with Māori and admit these changes have been driven primarily by the National Party and they and their friends are the most likely beneficiaries of Māori land loss? The Honourable Te Urara Flavel. Order. Mr Speaker. Mr Speaker, I'll just start by giving one statement from one group that actually represents more than 150 members, and I talk about the Federation of Māori Authorities. Order. Sir, it is the largest, I have support from the largest representative grouping of Māori freehold landowners who will be impacted by the reforms who support the direction of the reforms. In fact, sir, their spokesperson, Liz Mellish, acknowledges, as do many other groups, that, quote, the other iteration of the draft Ture Whenua Bill reflects the changes our members have asked for. Sir, as one of the biggest landowners in the country, FOMA is right behind this legislation. That's what counts. Māori landowners, that's what counts. Su order. Supplementary question. Chris Bishop. Thank you, Mr Speaker. Uh, has he seen any other proposals for reform of Te Ture Whenua Māori 1993? Why won't the Māori be Order. The Honourable Te... Mr Speaker. Order. Order. I must... Order. I must ask particularly for some cooperation from my presiding officer. Uh, the Honourable Te Ura Flavel. Thank you, Mr Speaker. In response to the question, actually, yes, I have, strangely enough. I've seen a proposal, quote, to help Māori realise the economic potential of Māori land by reviewing Te Ture Whenua Māori Act. I've also seen a proposal to, quote, review Ture Whenua land legislation to simplify the development op options for Māori land. So both of those appear in the Labour Party 2008-2011 Māori Affairs Policies. Order. Order. Well done, Mecca. Order. Point of, Point of order, the Honourable Tiara Flavel. So I seek leave to table Labour Party's 2008. No, order, oh. order, order. We're not, we're not, we're certainly not going there. Order, is this a order? Supplementary question. Supplementary you, question, uh, Madam Fox. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. Uh, has the Minister received any reports from landowners in the Ikaro Rafti region to support the Tude Whenua reforms? The Honourable Tiara Flavel. That, that's a great question. Uh, Mr Speaker, I'm pleased, I'm pleased to advise the member that I have received a number of reports from, Ikarora, from the Ikaro Rafati region supporting the changes that are taking place in Te Ture Whenua, including one just two days ago from the chair of the Aitanga Mahiki Trust, a trust that oversees some 30 land blocks in Gisborne. They're supportive. 
Supplementary. Supplementary question, Madam Fox. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. And what steps has the minister taken to ensure that Te Noranga Tiratanga and the Treaty of Waitangi remain at the heart of the bill? The Mr. Honourable Te Arara Flavel. That's another excellent question, Mr. Speaker. <laughs> the purpose and principles of the bill clearly outline that Te Tiriti of Waitangi, Te Noranga Tiratanga, and Taonga Tukuihu are given greater effect than the current Act. And if the House will indulge me just for one moment, I'll quote from the English version of the proposed text in the Bill, which says, the purpose of this Act is to recognise and provide for the mana and tinoranga tiratanga that since time immemorial, Māori have exercised and continue to exercise over their lands, resources and taonga in accordance with tikanga Māori and consistent with the guarantees given in Māori and Te Tiriti o Waitangi to protect the rights of owners in Māori land to retain, control, occupy and develop their land as taonga tukuiho for the benefit of present and future generations of owners, their whānau and hapū. And if that member supports that sort of notion, hopefully we'll look forward to her vote when it comes into the House. Yeah. Question number